Thank you. Mr. Ministries, the Minister of Children and Youth Services. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise today to recognize Autism Awareness Month, which takes place uh, each October. Uh, before I get started, I'd like to uh, just acknowledge the uh, children, youth, parents, and advocates here in Ontario and thank them uh, for the time they've taken over the last few months to uh, talk to me, work with me, uh, to uh, ensure that um, we can uh, move the autism file along. And I know that um, uh, the work that they do every single day uh, takes a lot of uh, courage. I understand the realities that parents face every single day, and I just want to say uh, thank you so much. Um, I also look forward to meeting more families and caregivers over the next uh, few months, Mr. Speaker. I also want to take a moment to recognize the commitment of those who work every day in communities across the province to support children, youth and adults with autism. Thank you for your continued perseverance, and please keep up the great work. Our children depend on it. Mr. Speaker, it's my goal as Minister responsible for children and youth here in the province of Ontario to ensure that young people have the best opportunity to find success in Ontario. That commitment extends, of course, to children with autism. Our government is dedicated to providing children and families with autism with the best possible supports today and in the future. And that's why, Mr. Speaker, Ontario recently made the most substantial public investment into autism. We've announced an unprecedented uh, investment of more than half a billion dollars over the next five years to enhance services and to better need meet the needs of children and families here in Ontario. And these are often complex needs. Autism is lifelong. It is complex. The symptoms can vary uh, significantly from a range of severities in each and every child. From a clinical standpoint, we know it means that every child with ASD needs unique, tre unique treatment. And more importantly, Mr. Speaker, we know that this means that every child with ASD has unique potential. We're committed to helping them achieve that potential. The new autism program here in Ontario will begin to be implemented in June of 2017, and it will foster development and provide more flexible, tailored, and individualized services to all children and youth with autism. It will completely transform our current system to better match the needs of families. So, Mr. Speaker, what we're going to do is create a single point uh, of entry, making it easier for families to access service. We're going to open up 16,000 new uh, service spaces for families with autism. Wait times will be significantly, significantly reduced, and all children, Mr. Speaker, regardless of age, will receive flexible services based on their needs. This will mark a major milestone in how autism services are delivered to children and youth here in our province. And I'm proud to be steering this change together with families, clinicians, and advocates. And Mr. Speaker, I understand that families have many questions as we move closer to that date in June of next year. And I understand that transition periods can be very challenging, especially when we're talking about families. That is why our government announced that we'll start the implementation a year sooner, in June of 2017. We're making sure that families are well supported during the transition program. Families of children who are transitioning from the IBI waitlist can access funds to help them get their services and supports they need for their children until the new Ontario Autism Program begins. We're also helping families access an autism autism diagnosis earlier so children can get treatment as soon as possible. We're doing this by increasing the diagnostic services through five regional hubs. And as a parent, Mr. Speaker, I want nothing more than what's best for my children, and I know that parents all across the province feel the same. So, Mr. Speaker, I'm committed to continuing to meet with parents and care caregivers to hear the issues and concerns. I want to know firsthand what's working and what's not working. By listening, we'll have a clear understanding of the challenges that parents face on a day-to-day -day basis so we can better understand and respond to their needs. So to parents, I'd like to say thank you very much for sharing your input and for partnering with us. We cannot implement a change, substantial change without your guidance and without your family's experience. 
And I'd be remiss not to acknowledge our work with the other government ministries as we begin to move closer to our new autism program here in the province. Enhancing our services require a holistic approach, which is why we're working closely with the Ministry of Education to strengthen our school supports to help children and youth transition into and continue in school for, on a full-time basis. Mr. Speaker, publicly funded school boards are receiving funds to support children's transitioning into school during the new autism transition period. School boards will also be eligible for funding for after-school uh, development programming. We're also working closely with the, minister, the Ministry of, Co of Community and Social Services to improve employment supports for young people with autism. Mm -hmm. Mr. Speaker, all of these collective efforts are making a huge difference, and they will continue to make a huge difference, and we know we can always do better, Mr. Speaker. A big part of doing better is about understanding more about autism spectrum, spectrum disorder itself. Because of its complexity, there is so much more we need to learn to better understand autism, and over the last few years, a great deal of research has been done here in the province of, of Ontario, and every year we are learning more. Statistics tells us, tell, tell us Mr. Speaker, that in Ontario we have approximately 40,000 young people with autism, and we're told that this number is going to increase year after year. Since 2004, our government has invested more than $21 million in more than 20 autism research initiatives. We're also supporting research in neurodevelopment, including autism, through a $12.5 million investment over five years in the Ontario Brain Institute. And Mr. Speaker, as we move towards implementation of our new autism program, we're also going to continue to seek the advice from our clinical expert committee. We've also established an advisory committee of parents, stakeholders, service providers, and other experts to provide advice on the design and implementation of this new program. So I look forward to continue to working with the Minister of Education and the Minister of Community and Social Services, family, stakeholders, as we design and implement this new program. In closing, I just want to say to all the parents out there, thank you so much for the work you've done. Thank you for your advocacy. I'd like to thank uh, my critics for the work that they've done, and I want to uh, say that together we can move forward to build an autism program that every Ontarian can be proud of. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you.